week. Today I'm with Jeremiah Plunkett. Yellow again, everybody. Jeremiah Plunkett and Quinn Charisma. Once again, we are smack dab along ringside and ready to go with another big week of the Territorial Wrestling Review. Quentin, we are on episode 101. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. I um, took a week off and I'm revived and ready to roll and you look like a zombie. <laughs> I feel, I feel like a zombie. The body's beat up and the mind's not far behind, but we are going to push through and get through it. Yeah. Hey, we got those six listeners, buddy. We got to keep it going for them. Got to dig down deep. That's it, man. That's it. Got to find something. <laughs> Few men have logged the miles, shaken the hands, and put in the work Chris Michaels has to become a pro wrestler. Pro wrestling proved to be everything a young boy dreamed it would be, but it also extracted a far greater toll on his body and soul than he ever imagined. Chris Michaels' book, Indestructible, chronicles a career spanning more than three decades, in which Chris has had cups of coffee in every major promotion, knocking on one door after another, never getting that big break, but never, ever giving up. Michaels holds nothing back, sharing in his own words the good, the bad, and the ugly sides of pro wrestling. He shares humorous stories of ring mishaps and meeting his heroes, as well as reveals the failed relationships, broken promises, dead-end roads, and gut-wrenching injuries. A lesser man would have quit decades ago, but not Chris Michaels. He continues to do the drives, make the towns, and prove to fans and wrestlers alike that he is truly indestructible. Pick up your copy of Indestructible on Amazon.com, EatSleepWrestle.com, or directly from Chris Michaels himself. You won't regret it. We got a uh, we got a couple wild uh wild matches this week. Yeah, <laughs> who went last time? I have no clue. I don't know. I, I don't I know who go, went first. I already got yours pulled up. Do so you want to go? Just go with yours. Yeah, that that works. Plus, yours is the gimmick match. It should be main. Um, let's see. All right. So my match this week is brought to us by Classic Wrestling Stuff. What a name! Over on YouTube. <laughs> It's from Houston Wrestling. Uh, it was on September 9th, excuse me, September 28th, 1973. The match is Paul Bosch versus Playboy Gary Hart in a Chicago death match. How did you say uh, Paul Bosch was during this match? Did I say Paul Bosch was in the match? How old was it at the time this match was? Oh, how, how old was he? Was he? Um, you know what? We found this out last week, and I totally didn't write it down. If you don't, don't worry about it. You uh, I just need to find his age here. Uh, he was born in 1912, so he would have been 61. Um, he would have been about to be 61. He was, he was born at the beginning wow. of October in 1912. Huh. So 61, and we know how the, the, the old-timers aged a lot faster than the today's wrestlers. So 61, he probably looks 91, <laughs> or at least 81. Uh, but probably. We'll <laughs> probably right. but if you well, are all you set up all right we are triple zeroed out we're gonna hit play with you guys at home in three two one play with the nwa on demand oh we're starting out hot does he have a, a popcorn shirt on over his uh... oh, look, look, that's a popcorn vendor shirt or a uh what do you call the 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 old, the old, um, oh, barbershop quartet. Yeah, barbershop quartet. Who is these people? People running in the ring. I guess they got Who seconds. Are these brothers? They're old school. You can tell they're old dudes. I don't know. Especially that guy. Yeah. It's hard to see. You can't really get a good. And this is probably the oldest Houston match I've ever seen. Seventy three. I mean, look, this is great quality for 73. Wow. Yeah, it is really good quality. I'm started, actually quite surprised. They started out hot, and then they broke them up to do the now. <laughs> I'm like, that don't make sense. Oh, he, oh, Bosch does have the most sh little shooter boots on. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, no tiny, tiny shooter boots. And he's got the K&H Butcher, and I don't think he's got the thing sewn in the back. No. No, I don't. I'm trying to see what Gary... Did he say he's wearing brown? I'm trying to see... It looks like brown and red, long, tight trunk combo. Yeah. 
Boss was just pointing at the announcer guy. <laughs> Dexter to beat, would you say 61? Oh, uh, well, he's about to be 61. He was like a week away from it. He, he, he looks in really good shape. I mean, yeah, I mean, not bad. Not for, for sure. 60. Not not bad. You know, he, he's not like those 61 year olds now who are still bodybuilding and stuff, but no, he's doing did you all right. See the, the special ref, did that name click at all? I didn't with me. I, I, wasn't even looking at looking at that when it happened. It's Mike what? Miz. I was like, "Is the Miz? Is the Miz? <laughs> it's like Mike. It was like Mike Miz something, Missouri or so. I don't know. Well, they don't want to shake the hands. Oh, big lock up. Is he gonna monkey flip him? <laughs> Gary Hart, so young here. Oh, or at least, oh, he, at least looks it. he looks what? Gary Hart looks so young here. Yeah. Another big lockup. He's going to pop his ears again. Yeah, I don't know if I'd call that oh. a big lockup. <laughs> it's a lockup, right? <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh. He's fast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's ducking into. Oh, big one. Oh, oh, he smacked him right in the ear. Hit him with the Judy right. shot. Yeah. <laughs> What's that tattoo on Gary Hart's arm? It looks like a cross. Okay. What's that? Do you see that stance? Uh oh, going for the top wrist lock. Oh, he's grabbing the butcher. Oh, back somebody's going to shoot him off. Oh, big knee. I don't think Paul Bosch is running. <laughs> oh, Look at those knees. Now. Those don't look like runner's knees. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. In fact, his left one, there's a weird bone sticking out of the left. <laughs> I just thought, oh, he chopped him in the knee. He chopped him yeah, in the good, knee. He's good at these duty chops. Yeah. Oh, he kicked, oh, he kicked his leg off from under him. <laughs> look at Hart. He's like, what the crap, dude? <laughs> Whoop. Yeah, he was throwing some haymaker chops, wasn't he? <laughs> oh, Do you know Paul gonna... Bosch is the oh. most decorated military vet veteran in pro wrestling? What's that? I, it was literally something I heard the other day, and I was watching a shoot. He's like one of, if not the most decorated uh, military professional that ever got into wrestling. Wow, I didn't know that. Because he went off to World War II. Yeah. And was apparently like super, you know, decorated over there. Well, heart's powder now. <laughs> what exactly is a Chicago death match? I don't know. <laughs> Why should it just be a regular up. match? It looks like it's going to be a regular match. Is he going for it? Looks like he was trying to. Oh, oh, is it? look at him. Oh, he's chopping him. In them Judy chops. Oh, we gut punch. <laughs> so get those away. bad boys back. Oh, here we go. Big shoot off. Oh, big chop. <laughs> He's like, I ain't back bumping. <laughs> uh oh, short arm scissors. Yep. Wow. Was that his heart's feet in the ropes over there? I couldn't tell. Oh, I guess it's I get. I guess you got to quit in the death match. Weird. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess you submit. They was... Is this boots brown? T oh, the... are they brown and green? Brown with green ring tips. Oh, nice rolls. Like that was neat. Have you ever seen that? Uh, I have. I have. I can't remember who I saw do it, but I have seen the. That was nice. Short arms and rolls. Wow. Yeah, I think hearts. Our boots are brown with green wing tips. Nope. Bring the mic back out. Oh. I think you're seeing things, and they're just brown. But. <laughs> Is he humping? Actually. <laughs> I think they're they're brown and red. Brown and red. Okay. Yeah. They have a little red thing on the side. Okay. 
Looks like he kept his uh, his color combination choice. That's probably his okay. only pair of tights. Yeah, because he didn't he, wrestle he, that long, did he? He didn't wrestle much, from what I can, what I've seen. I always rank. Oh, does he even have anything on? Or is he just pulling the. I mean, that's technically leg? a hold. It's not. Well, yeah. It's not much of one, but. I'm trying. I see if he had his leg grapevine in between, but I don't think he does. Oh I no! Uh, just, no, I should, it's literally just folded over. Folded over. Yeah. Yeah, kind of trying to like calf slice her himself. Uh oh, oh, you get your headlock. Yeah, game the headlock. First into a headlock. Yeah, them knees, you can see them knees ain't running. <laughs> no, no. There, there's you can tell there's stuff missing like around the knees. Yeah, yeah, them. I've seen, seen some better days. Oh, hammerlock, hammerlock down the. Hammerlock right, to the go, hammerlock. Go, go for a hammerlock dragon sleeper right there. I don't know what that was. Uh -oh. Hammerlock pile driver? Maybe. He's going to oh, ask him right, right here. Hey, Gary oh, Hurts, balls oh. are on your head. Do you give up? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's, he's cranking that Fujiwara. Looks like yeah, a, yeah, he's cranking the fool out of that yeah, thing. That looks kind of suspect. <laughs> looks like looks like the old uh, French sugar that Corsica Joe used to do to all the boys in the locker room. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was always funny to see on a green kid. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it, it got to the point where I'd start like I'd, I'd smell Corsica coming up because I'd smell his pipe tobacco, and yeah. I'd be like, "Who's the green kid? He hasn't done this to yet." Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as you walked in, I'd be like. He's the youngest. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That flash from that camera about blinded. Yep. <laughs> All I saw was a flash. Oh, he's I've never seen it right straight down the barrel like that. <laughs> Uh-oh. He can't, he can't give up if he's in his sleep. He's got him in sleep. How's he going to give up? <laughs> hey, he's going to smack him in the back and wake him up and then make him give up. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, did you see how he had to get up? Yeah, he was, he was struggling, yeah. wasn't he? The, the, them, them knees are bad. Yeah, <laughs> he was struggling, boy. He was like, whoa. When, when I have bad knee days, those feet are real close together when I go to get up. <laughs> That's killing me. That's him to give up on a sleeper. <laughs> Holy wrestling. <clears throat> Okay, why is he pinning I guess him? it is submissions only because he he just waved him off. Yeah, he's like, you can't pin him, dude. Is he out? No, he's sitting there calling spots. Oh. <laughs> oh, put the boots to him. He's punching with his left, kicking with his right. Oh, he's cutting a promo on the mic. Dad, gum it, can't hear it. <laughs> now, what's he doing now? I don't think he knows. Well, that's what I say. He's like, hey, well, should I, should I, what should I do? Is he trying to figure I'm out the Indian, Indian death lock? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I've been going for Indian death lock for a minute. Okay, what are you doing? <laughs> There's no cut pins. I think Bosch just put himself in the Indian death lock. Did he? Yes. I, I can't see. Because look at the legs. All of a sudden, I can oh, wait, but by putting yeah. yourself in the Indian death lock, <laughs> they're also in it. If you can get it reversed, yes, he, he surely did it. He did. That's it. He just gave up. Oh, what's he doing now? Oh, he's saying <laughs> he wanted to hold the mic when he said it. He sure did. He put himself in that hole in the Indian death lock and made him. His heart couldn't get it. <laughs> he put himself in. <laughs> and now they're making him break him out. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that was good. Actually, that was really good. 
Yeah, that was that was, that was pretty fun. That, that was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And, and I don't know if you if you got this in your pop ups afterward, but uh, Gary Hart, my life in wrestling, uh, the, the is on YouTube in audiobook format. It popped up. Paul Bosch presents wrestling. That's what popped up on mine. Ah, okay. Well, one yeah. of the chapters for Gary Hart's audio book uh, popped up, but it, so it has an audio version of the book on YouTube, but it's by chapter by chapter. Wow, I, I, I was really, I was really impressed about the. That was that was really good. He, um, I mean, for sixty years old, he did a lot of wrestling. He slinging them Judy chops like crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, he was doing those wrist locks and stuff and roll throughs and stuff. I think. He had put himself in the finisher. <laughs> I kind of like that. It was, his heart couldn't get it. He was trying his best. But he couldn't. <laughs> oh, man. That was a good little fun little match. Yeah, I, re- I really I, enjoyed that. I, I figured Bosch wasn't going to go out there and, like, totally crap the bed. But when I saw the yeah. thumbnail and saw how Bosch looked, I was like, ooh, but he might. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, and I know that's terrible, but. Oh, yeah. But how many times have we seen it though? Yeah. Yeah, Oklahoma. you know, pa- a passer prime guy yeah. getting coming back and it being terrible. Yeah. Oh, more yeah. a whole bunch of times. Yeah. So he knew his limitations, which a lot of them don't. You know. Yeah. That's what. He, it, he and in fairness, he didn't have. He didn't show a lot of them. He didn't run, no. and I'm sure that was by design. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was how liked it. it. Was how old was Gary Hart at this point? Oh, this yeah. was seventy three. Like thirties, probably. Uh, let's see. Gary Hart was born in 36. Whoop, wrong Gary Hart. Sorry. <laughs> that that was uh, Gary Hart, the politician. Uh, this Gary Hart was born in 42. So he had been oh, 31. Wow. A lot younger than I thought. Hmm. Like, I don't know. He, he looked pretty baby face ish. Like, he looked pretty young. Well, I guess. <laughs> I just expect everybody to look old now. <laughs> I've always been wrong on these ages. <laughs> um, so this was 70. When was the plane crash? 75? Oh, that I don't know. I think it was 75, wasn't it? So a couple years before the plane crash. No, he did hit some matches in Florida under a hood. But he's mostly, so most I know him as the manager. I don't I don't know much about him, actually. We just, you know, seen matches here and there, you know, listed. Um so yeah, was, <laughs> did he uh, did he match. wrestle at all after he became mainly a manager or no? As far as I know, he didn't. Like he pretty much was just manager only, right? From what I what little bit I've you know seen out there. Wait, was he hurt in the plane crash? Oh yeah. Okay, I didn't I didn't know if he. He wasn't hurt. I don't think was, he was, was he in the crash summer. that was he in the crash that Bobby Shane died in? Yeah, it was okay. him. Him all saddle and. Um, Bobby Shane and um, Buddy Colt. Buddy Colt was flying and they crashed into Tampa, uh, Tampa Bay, the Bay of Tampa, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, they said that Buddy Colt was seat belted in and couldn't get out. I mean, uh, Bobby Shane couldn't get out. He was seat belted in and drowned. So, and did Buddy he Colt was, survive or no? Did he pass? Yeah. He survived. He didn't wrestle again, though. I mean, he survived. Um, yeah. Basically, I've read you know, all the stories I've read, you know. Bobby Shane was going to be the next big thing, you know. Well, he was the king, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's sorry. He was the king. Of, he's in the king of wrestling. And I always, man, if you look at, if you see pictures of him and everything, he always, he had that old K and H, just colorful. All this stuff was colorful. All that, he, you know, all that old K and H colorful print. He had all that. He wore all that stuff. But, uh, I said, I don't think I ever seen. I might have seen a clip or two of some of that old 70s Florida that's floating around the clips. I think I might have seen one or two matches. Just, you know, it's just real brief, you know, clip form that's floating around maybe one or two, but I hadn't seen nothing. I don't think I've ever seen anything, you know, at length of a match with him in it, so. You've probably heard us mention crowbarpress.com, but let's get real for a moment. Scott Teal is crowbarpress.com. Scott has been writing about professional wrestling since 1968 and has edited, written, and published more than 100 books on the subject. Scott was also honored by both the Cauliflower Alley Club and the George Tragus Luthez Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame for his contributions as a professional wrestling historian and journalist. All this to say, Scott knows his stuff. But if you're not a big reader, hey, that's okay. 
CrowbarPress.com also has DVDs, magazines, photos, posters, and t-shirts, all fit for you or the old school wrestling fan in your life. So please, do us a favor and support our friend, friend of the show, Scott Teal, by visiting CrowbarPress.com, professional wrestling legends in print and video. All right. So that was a good little pick. I enjoyed that a lot. Now we go to mine. And yeah, I now we go to the gimmick get. match. I don't know what we're going get, to get with mine. <laughs> yeah, so th- this one is brought to us by CF Soldier on YouTube. <laughs> uh, it. The title of the video is FMW 1994 First Ever Electric Pool Match. But let me go ahead and give you what the match actually is. This is from September 25th, 1994. Um, And it is an electrified barbed wire dynamite pool double hell death match. (laughs) All right. (laughs) And it pits at Sushi Onita. Katsutoshi Nijama and Mr. Ganosuke versus Hideki Hosaka, Mr. Pogo, and the Gladiator, or as most people in America know him as Mike Austin. Like I said, and I, apparently, I this like... is a lim- elimination as well. Wrestlers can be eliminated via oh. pinfall, submission, or being thrown in the pool. <laughs> okay. Uh, remember the last our last show I, when I told you what I picked, and at that time we didn't know who was in. I said it had to be Pogo and Anita. Definitely was going to be in a match today. Definitely, so they are. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, the quality looks really bad. I, I couldn't find another version of this, um, but I just I had to see it because it <laughs> it just sounds yeah. so crazy. So yeah, how often do you get an electrified pool? I mean, wouldn't that kill you? I mean, I mean yeah, it, it relies, even if it was like low wattage, you know. And I mean, still it would it you wouldn't be able to get out. So I assume it would eventually, yeah, or at least it would cause you to drown. I don't, it, I, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just saw that and it said first ever. I've never seen an electric pool match. <laughs> and I was like, all right, this thing might be pretty wacky. Let's take a, let's take a gander at it. So I picked it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm uh, interested to see what kind of cru- a cluster we get in ourselves into. <laughs> and it's going to be, especially if you got six guys in there, it's going to be messed up. Well, it, it's six guys and it looks like they're on a floating platform in the middle of a waterway. Yeah, it looks weird, dude. Yeah. So, leave it up to Anita. Yep. <laughs> I'm ready when you are. All right. Well, if you're all triple zeroed out at home, we'll hit play and, and watch this cluster in a full effect. In three, two, one, play. All, all right. right. Now, now we got to figure out who's who. I don't. I don't know. It's Pogo. I can. Well, actually, good gosh. The quality Pogo's is wearing camo, but there's someone else also wearing camo. Well, that's what I, I think. Thought, yeah. I think Pogo's the. Pogo? Well, no, that's Pogo right there. Yeah, that's Pogo. Yeah, the quality is so bad on this. That's Mike Awesome, the biggest guy in there. Oh, somebody's getting hit with something on the. Is that a Bob Ward bat? Yeah, that's yeah, who, sure. that's what I originally thought was Pogo, but I, now I don't know. Is that not Pogo right there? That's Pogo right there. Yeah, he's got the black shirt on. Well, yeah, but the other person has the black shirt on, but they have oh. green camo, and that's who we originally said was Pogo. Okay. Oh, he's putting a knee in his head to the Bob wire. And this guy, look how much is wrapped around that bag. Good grief. That's Onita, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. He was, yeah, uh, he's getting color already, and he wore a yeah. white, was smart enough to wear a white shirt. That's definitely Onita. Yeah. So, is there any ropes at all in this? It looks like there's. Well, I don't know if it's actual rope, but there's something on at least one side, maybe two. <laughs> oh, we should find out. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, oh, whoa! Oh. So they're on a little platform. They're off on the platform. There he goes. So, is it a lake, like a pond? I yeah, know. I don't know what they're in. They... Swimming pool. It must be like a big swimming pool. Oh, what is that Bob Wire? I think it's Bob yeah. over there on, on those ropes. Oh, who that was got kicked in the... Yeah, this is just all over the place. Oh! That brother just hit a Uranagi suplex on... Yeah, that was nice. On Mike Awesome. And, like, not the rock bottom. Like, hit an actual Uranagi suplex. Okay, is that a... There's a rail there for... 
I don't. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's rails on each one of those sides. Whoa, it looks whoa, like they're whoa. trying to keep the ring in the middle, and they're also yeah. wrapped in barbed wire because they can't just be there for support. Yeah. Oh, he catches dude's kick, trips him. Oh, he even the goods. Yeah. I feel my, sort of big Mike Austin's big move. Single leg takedown, kick him in the yam bag. Yeah. Oh, pile driver. I guess it's a big swimming pool they're in, and they got a big floating stage on it. So I guess the water's technically supposed to be electrified. Oh. They're at SeaWorld Japan. <laughs> There's a, the electrified water is not the issue. There's actually a giant killer whale just swimming around. Killer whale's been in there at eight and days. <laughs> I'll go with some big head butts. I mean, this would really be an easy match to work so far by watching it, you know? Oh, yeah. It's just kind of do stuff. Act like you're going to crawl in the water a couple times. Yeah. Good God, those oh. ham hock fists. Oh. They're ugly punches, but you know they're stiff. Awesome with a big splash. Is that a okay, barricade? That's not, it's just laid up there, ain't it? It looked like it, yeah. It looked like it was. And it's got, yeah, he's, he's, oh, nice. That one brother is just throwing sweet suplexes. Yeah, he's just hitting everybody, ain't he? Oh, he's got the big bat. Yeah, quality's hard. It's kind of hard to tell who's who at times. So that one team always got face paint. And Mike Austin got his face painted up. Yeah. Pogo and the other guy, too. P Pogo and the one we thought was Pogo. Yeah, they look – he looks like Pogo, but he's smaller. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh gosh. Jesus. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what a weird, awesome bomb. I know. That looks dangerous. I, I don't know if it looked any more dangerous than what later awesome bombs would look like. Yeah. I love that run, that, that little running headbutt. Yeah, that is neat. Who's he? Who he, he always just murder in ECW uh, Tanaka? Masato <laughs> Tanaka. Jesus. Yeah. Oh. And I believe this is where Masato Tanaka got his like notoriety was FMW. Yeah, I was. Oh, we got a bunch of them out in the. Well, we did have, there was about four guys out there. On the thing now. Uh oh, awesome. Oh, is he gonna slam him into the water? Oh, 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 there it goes. It blew up. That's the electricity. Is he dead? Is he dead. <laughs> He's dead. I That'd guess not. Nice. <laughs> Shouldn't he be like convulsing, make it look like he really got jacked up? It, oh, dude, biggest dude in that suplex. Well, he's not the <laughs> one who was throwing the suplexes originally. Oh, That's the guy who just got eliminated. Yeah. Oh, Pogo's going to fly into the barbed wire. Oh, oh Man, I want to get this head headbutt up. down. I really like it. Ooh, oh, the barbed wire blows up. Oh. It's FMW. Everything blows up. Yeah. <laughs> the air blows up. Yeah. Oh, here goes you, awesome you take a corner, it blows up. No, I'll drive her. Oh. What's he got a comma? He's got a comma. Comma Mustafa? No, look, they call him comma. Oh yeah, that's the that's the pogo gimmick. Yeah, is he? Oh, I've he seen this nuts? one. He even the nuts? In the belly. Oh, the belly. Okay. Oh, I you know what? Part? I have seen a clip of this match. Okay. Did he juice himself in the belly with the I, gimmick? I think. Oh my God! Well, yes, Anita. Of course, he's going to. I, I, either either that, or they got some like capsules. No, Anita. He'd be like, "That's nothing." <laughs> what happened to the other? Okay, they just okay. He's hitting him. I was wondering. Oh. If he gives me stuff, that's a lot of blood. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm like, kind of. I, I don't know how they are doing it, and obviously, if it's in better, you know, Ooh. better uh, quality, we could see more. But yeah, 
as it would help. It it does pretty much look like a old old brother just committed a attempted murder. Yeah. Oh, Mike Austin close lined his own feller there. Oh, drop kick. Oh. No, oh, Anita's like, oh, give me that. Uh oh, you done messed up, Hogo. Oh. Oh, DDT gets it. <laughs> you stabbed me in the belly. I'm gonna give you a DDT. Yeah. Oh no, he's got it. He's oh, he hit awesome with it. Now he's got the bat. Oh, yeah. Let me drop this thing. It could really kill somebody. Let me pick up a bat and hit you. Oh, oh, what a bump! Oh, that was all. Awesome. Yeah, he you cleared the bump. landing and everything. Yes. Wow. He's dead. He's floating. I can already yeah. see the creative for this match. It's like, hey, now when you get thrown out, pretend like you're dead, all right? I mean, you're going to have to move the float, but you know. <laughs> that bump was amazing. He cleared that whole little landing part and landed in the water. Wow. Just down four on four. I mean, two on two. Well, I mean, four on four. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, he got his gimmick back. He's hitting another brother with it now. Has he got it on his head? Yeah, it's, it's in his head. Man, awesome quality was better than this. And you know what's crazy? Pogo don't have no boots on. He just got kick pads over his bare feet. Oh, wow, does he? Yeah, I just saw his toes. Or I thought they looked like toes. They look like boots. They look like, just like toes. Oh, he's hitting brother with that. It looks like he's stuck in his head, but you can't. It's hard to tell. Is he... I mean, I mean, obviously, the I'm pretty doing? sure they're they're just What's working the it. But... Doing? What was that ref doing? I don't know. It, he wasn't counting. No, what? He was, that was weird looking. Uh oh, he's gonna throw him in the barbed wire. Boom! Blow him up. <laughs> and Nate is a mess. Yeah, uh, Anita looks like a murder victim. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I, I, I honestly think he did use fake blood. Uh oh, what's he doing? He's getting something out of his pocket. Uh oh. Smoke, you know what that means? Smoke break, though, don't you? Smoke break. <laughs> Fire. Uh, kinda. <laughs> Who's he gonna burn it? Oh gosh, you just started him on fire. <laughs> <laughs> is that the same one he was oh he kicked he kicked out <laughs> he done got butchered with a big uh, knife gimmick then he caught him on fire and he still kicked out <laughs> good guy dude I believe Anita's hurt like the, Anita can sell so well yeah he does he's good. he does sell good like I believe he's like not just hurt like I believe he's dying yeah. My kind of big brother kicked out over here. <laughs> After getting blown up in the bob wire, getting cut up with the with the knife gimmick, and then I, I figured he would have launched himself into the water. Yeah. Yeah, he's on fire. <laughs> Ooh, that bob wire's coming off and it's stuck in his back and he pulled off. <laughs> oh, that dude's a mess. face is a mess, ain't it? Ooh. Good God. This is crazy. Yeah, this uh -oh. this is almost like a snuff film. I'll go in his pocket. He's going to fire up on Nita. He's just going to burn on Nita. Here we go. Uh, this time it's really a cigarette. He just needs to get some fresh <laughs> air. Uh-oh, here he goes. He loads it up, loads his mouth up. He's going to kick it like he swallow it. <laughs> Uh-oh, here he goes. Oh, no. Oh, Nita's probably going to take it to the face because he's a psycho. That's what I'm thinking, too. Oh, he missed. Yeah, ter terrible oh. quarter roll. Oh, is he going to fall? Is somebody going to dive on him? He's going to dive on him. Oh, let both go out. That was that was neat. I like that. That was a good little. That was good. So it's. And then fake Pogo and real Pogo. Oh. And Onita, Onita just murders fake Pogo. Yep. Power driver. Oh, power bomb. No, fire, thunder, power bomb. Yeah, that's right. I was need to finish. That's right. Gosh, she looks a mess. Yeah, he does. Oh, 
That was it. That was Just it. Cut off. Man. Well, that was good. <laughs> I wish quality would have been better, but that was that was that interesting. Was wild. <laughs> oh man. That that, that was, was that was wild. Like I that was crazy. I feel like I watched something worse than what I did. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because of Anita selling, like oh, when I say so worse, good. I don't mean like it was bad. Yeah, I know his selling was. You can tell he sold a lot better than the other guy, the, the other main face that was gushing blood. Jesus, yeah. Oh, you know, people, so everyone good. says Ricky Morton, and you never hear Onita. because it's a different. You know, it's it's still selling. You know, um, it's a different kind of selling because Morton's is a uh, wrestling. This is like this guy's actually. Getting about to die, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, it makes and, he, it and I believe it. Yeah, he looks. I mean, yeah, he's very good at selling. Yeah, he don't get the credit, you know. Um, yeah, he was he was really believable in that selling in that match, big time. That was a really good sell job. Dude, but that man. bump Mike Awesome took was crazy. <laughs> man, if he missed that, that would have been bad. <laughs> oh, I mean, it 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 could have been a uh, Rick Rude sting. Yeah, 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 could be exactly. I mean, because that, that's what it, this, that's what ended Rude's career is those damn little platforms. It's about the same time period, wasn't it? 94, 95 ish when Rude happened. You know 94. what? I think you're right. There's a couple year difference in the in that area there. Um then the brother hit other brother with the with the dive. I thought that and they took both of them took the bump out in the water. I thought that was pretty cool. I was kinda like that. I mean, it was really um and then when he brought the uh, comma out. Sickle or I don't know them as commas. I don't know, but um, I got really wild at that. And yeah, that was and then he the fire gimmick. Yeah, that was really that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, the the mat the match itself pretty ugly, yeah. but like God, everything else that was crazy, dude. I like that. It was wild, and you know I watched it because it was it went long as it should have. It didn't draw out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I, absolutely. You couldn't do. One. I hate when people try to do crazy death match, hardcore match for like 20, 30 minutes. It's like, who yeah. wants that? Nobody. No, Nobody wants that. That was perfect. Perfect timing for what they were doing. That was, but yeah, that was perfect. Wow. No, I really enjoyed that. You know, all the matches I, we've watched, FMW, I've liked on here. All the ones we've watched have been really good. Because I, I think, I think hard- we've been smart. We've always kept Onita in it. Yeah. I mean, it's had crazy deathmatch stuff, but, you know, it, the other ones, like, it has storylines. And this one, it didn't have a storyline, but the selling, his selling made, made it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it made it really good. It's like the other ones was him and Pogo, you know, the first, that was their first big show, that one you picked. And then we had the uh, the women's match with the barbed wire, exploding barbed wire. And it was that one, that one's last match or something. Yeah, so my, it like a big story. Yeah, they all had meaning, and um, so yeah, I've actually seen the the FMW that we've watched since we've been doing this. I've really enjoyed. Yeah, I like that. I didn't. I saw it. And I was like, I don't know if I'm liking it, but I I I'm liking it. Like WWE Raw, but without the budget. WMF Medium Rare captured the chaos of live wrestling mayhem federation hardcore events held throughout Rutherford County, Tennessee in the early 2000s. This weekly series was produced by our good friend, Multimedia Monte Carlo, a local TV personality turned pro wrestling manager who would threaten to edit fans from the broadcast if they didn't give him his proper respect. So fast forward nearly 20 years later, and Mr. Carlo has brought WMF Medium Rare to YouTube. Mr. Carlo has painstakingly went back to the vault to bring this cult classic wrestling promotion back for a new generation of fans to witness. Check out WMF Medium Rare's channel over on YouTube and tell them we sent you. All right. So what do you got picked for next time? <laughs> oh, I still got, I've got one that I, I don't think I'm going to pick because it's short and I just know it's going to be purposely terrible. So I'm going to save <laughs> that. Um, what I've got for next week is brought to us by Randall G over on YouTube. And the match is Ernie Ladd, okay. the big cat, versus Haystacks Calhoun from Madison Square Garden, November 1975. That'd be good. Ernie Ladd, he'll, I think it'll be good. They I, uh, I think it will be too. So this is relative. Uh, I don't know how young Calhoun is here. Um, well, that last but- one we watched was. That match we you picked with him against Killer, Killer Tim Brooks is about the same time period. Right. So it's toward the latter tail end of his, of his career. 
And uh, that was on the probably the early, not mid, but almost to mid Ernie Ladd's career. Almost mid. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really interested to watch Ernie Ladd work because he's an excellent heel. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying he'll play, you know, and those guys, like I said, back, it's like, you know, the Killer Tim Brooks match, he knew how to work with Haystack Calhoun, his, what he could do, you know, and Atlanta did the same thing. So he'll work, you know, it ain't like nowadays when they go out there and, and you don't work with each other and work to, but you know, they can, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, oh, and you, you know, he's going to use the thumb and oh, yeah. do all the, the fun carny stuff. Oh, yeah. But it should be a fun little match. It should be on. Um, I'd be, I'd be pretty good. Um, oh man, I got a doozy, man. <laughs> All right. This is gonna be, this is gonna be so bad. <laughs> I saw it and I was like, if I do not pick this, <laughs> I'm hoping I'm wrong. I hope it turns out good. But when I tell you who's in it, you're going to be like, no, there's, there's no way. Okay, it's from WCW, September 21st, 1991. Diamond Stud and Oz. Versus Tom Zink and Big Josh. <laughs> wow. Um, is this, uh, is this by, brought to you brought to us by Old School Wrestling TV? Yep, sure is. All right, I'll I'll add that to my queue. That's oh my uh. <laughs> That's gonna be something, man. <laughs> yeah. So like some some talent in there. You know, watch that. Is that there's some good talent in there. Yeah, but the style um, class. Not yeah. necessarily good talent at the same time or the peak of their career. Yeah. Um, and poor Zink Kevin always, Nash. You know, Tom Zink was, I was always a stable baby face. Good stable baby face. I mean, you know, mid card. Even, he, you know, that, that's top as far as you could push him. Mid, you know, mid card was kind of pushing it sometime. But Big Josh, I don't remember much. I mean, I mean, it's Matt Bourne, so I don't know. I don't really remember much of how he worked. Did he just work as Matt, like Matt Bourne style, or did he? I mean, uh, he he worked he worked very Matt Bourne style. Um, he he would have a more jovial character sometimes, and I remember he he did a log running spot to where like he'd hit the ropes, you drop down, and he'd get on your back and act like he was rolling logs. No way. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. But but overall he's just he's just Matt Bourne. Okay. But, so he he may go crazy and suplex Oz on his head or something. <laughs> so Diamond Stud he'd been working a while by this time. Now Oz had only been working a couple maybe two years maybe something like that yeah because he he came in as the Master Blaster yeah not in in eighty nine I believe I believe it was at Wrestle War eighty nine yeah. Oh. Man, so he's been working about two years. I mean, he'd come in before Wrestle War '89, but I believe their original partner uh, got fired, and they replaced him with uh, oh, what was he? Is an older guy that they replaced him with? Uh, was it Don Green, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, not Don, Al Green. I'm sorry, Al Green. Al Green. Yeah, you're right, Al Green. But not the famous Green Brothers of of the '50s and '60s and '70s. The other Al Green, the younger Al Green, not the old timer Al Green. Yeah, but I guess they had somebody else who with them originally, and they're like, uh, I was watching a shoot about it, and he said something about, like, the guy didn't want to put somebody over. Hmm. Hmm. But um, I'm going to come up with this Oz gimmick. Is that just, I better remember uh, it. I, I think it was a Kevin Sullivan thing. Okay. Is that mask thing, what comes up to the ring is just like, I don't know. <laughs> it's yeah, weird it, looking. <laughs> it's terrible. That's what, that's what I said, poor Kevin Nash. <laughs> Like that, that gimmick sucked. Vinny Vegas was kind of cool, but that gimmick sucked. You know, Vinny Vegas for what it was wasn't bad. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know? Vinny Vegas is kind of cool. And he 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 got more out of it than he should have. You know, he didn't do bad with it. Um, but Oz, yeah, that's just ugh, I don't know. But yeah, I saw it. I said, I we got to watch it. You know, so yeah. No, and, <laughs> and as a matter of fact, talking about Vinny Vegas, Vinny Vegas and the. The old DDP, like before he became People's Champ DDP. Yeah. You know, DDP with every gimmick under the sun, chewing gum, a cigar, rings, <laughs> like all that, that DDP. Him and Vinny yeah. Vegas had some fun tag matches together. That'd be, I, I said, I don't, I, you know, my surprise might be actually decent. We don't know, you know, because, you know, I mean, with four guys in there, you can always, 
hide hide somebody too, you know. Yeah. And, you know, it's one on one. Sometimes it's hard to cover up for the other guys' abilities, but you know, should be interesting. <laughs> so I'm on, I'm on oh, board oh, that yeah. one. I want to see if Matt Bourne goes crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What Matt Bourne we gonna get? Um, dude. Uh, do you have Roy Lusher on Twitter? I do not. Go like, uh, what do you do? What do you, I don't, what's Twitter? What do you like it or what do you do on Twitter? I, follow, is that it? Follow? Yeah. Okay. Dude, it's two, I think it was two weeks ago. He goes to all these Lucha shows in California. So he's a big Lucha mark. And um, he posts like old flyers and stuff from early 90s Lucha independent shows he went to. Uh, but he went to a show, I think it was two weeks ago, and he posted a video. I oh, I am following name. Roy Lucher. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> he he went to the show. You remember the – I'm bad with names and stuff, especially the Lucha people. But I remember back when I was watching Lucha a lot back in the early 2000s, they had the um, – we call it Exotico. An exo- Exotico. Yeah. The main one for AAA. Actually, he was in CMML at the time, and then he went to AAA, I think. Oh, uh, uh, the, there was a Pimpinella? Yes! Okay. <laughs> they put Roy Lusher in the, in, the, in the ring and put him in a chair. And, and he, she does his little gimmick with him. It's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, oh he, he, he got a lap dance from Pimpinella? Yes! Oh, my gosh. It was so funny. I laughed so much on that. I was Oh my gosh, that was so funny, man! It was hilarious. Yeah, that's, a, up, that's like, pretty tremendous, actually. Yeah, if you, if you get to get some time, look at look at on this thing, and I said it's um it's down a little ways. It's like a couple two three weeks ago, maybe. But yeah, it was uh, it was really good. Oh man, Charles Intiman died the other day. Who's that? Charles Intiman. I'm having trouble hearing you. I'm sorry. Charles Intiman. That name Intamin's sounds familiar. Donuts. You say Intiman donuts? donuts? Yeah. At the store. You don't know Intamins? No. You got the donuts. What? Like the best store-bought donuts ever. The white and blue box? Come on. I mean, I'm sure I've probably seen the box. The donuts, they have like different kind of pastries. Oh my God, I can't believe you. <laughs> yeah, they like the best store-bought donuts. You know, Bose Hostess or anybody else out of the water. They're so good. They passed away. So I was like, you know, I'm a donut guy, so, you know. If, if we're going off uh, random people that passed away, uh, <laughs> the amazing Jonathan. Who's that? The amazing Jonathan passed away. Okay. He didn't know Intimus, and I don't know Amazing Jonathan. Is so smart. Yeah, the the amazing he? Jonathan was a, uh, I guess he would have been like late 80s, early 90s, and he ends of the 2000s, um, comedian that was like, oh gosh, kind of like Penn and Teller. He was like a magician comedian. But, like, he was a bit more, I want to kind of say vulgar, but not really. <laughs> um, like, he, he would do a lot of his tricks, like, wouldn't involve stage blood or, you know, he one of his easiest ones was, like, where he made it look like a uh, pin. He was shoving a pin up his nose and pulling it out his ear and stuff like that. <laughs> or he had a gag where... He uh, would, you know, would say, you know, Every, oh, everything's fake, blah, blah, blah. There's all stage blood. And then he had a knife that made it, could make it look like where he's cutting into his arm and freak people out. <laughs> so he'd do stuff like that. But the Amazing Jonathan was hilarious. One of my favorite comedians growing up. Um, probably oh. watched him way younger than I should have, thanks to Comedy Central. I uh, but understand. yeah, he, he passed away the other day. And How old was he? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I believe is early 60s. Hmm. I uh, but. But yeah, man, uh, hey, I, I recommend like, you know, just YouTube. There's plenty of this stuff on YouTube. Uh, There's an amazing documentary um, about him. I believe it actually may be call, called like Always Amazing, I think is what it's called. Hold on a minute. Yeah, Always Amazing. The entire documentary is on hmm. uh, is on YouTube. And it's it's tremendous because he had, you know, he had drug problems and stuff like that hmm. at one point. And he got cleaned up and he got back into it. Um, and he was dying when this documentary came out, you know, really? so he held on for, you know, three, three years. Wow. Dang. That's still pretty cool. Huh. I'll have to check it out and get my free time. Yeah, I, can, I never heard of him. Hmm. Hmm. 
All right. What did you think about old um, AEW's pay per view? Uh, did not see the pay per view uh, uh, as normal. Always only saw highlights. Um, the dog collar match seemed amazing. Uh, William Regal's back, and that's yeah. wild. Yeah. Um, and I heard that match was pretty good too. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think about what else on the pay per view itself. But I don't. Like I said, I, I I'm behind. I stay behind. Yeah. So the only thing I really followed up on is the dog collar match. And then I yeah. saw that Regal was there and I watched yeah. his promo from this past dynamite. Yeah. I saw them. Um, I and I know you don't get on Twitter right now. Like you don't get on Twitter a lot, even though I did see you on there the other day. Um, <laughs> you know what the current thing is since Regal's promo on dynamite, all these people are really turned on by Regal and like, you know, you know when he was kind of flirty towards Tony Schiavone, like he said that that whole uh, what he said, he said thousands of broken bottles and a couple broken hearts too, sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> like wrestling Twitter is horny for R- William Regal in 2022, and it's so funny. <laughs> like Dude, guys and girls alike. Did um, you think he really was getting choked up, or was he working? When he's talking about Doctor Schiavone, he thanked him. For treating him right when he I, I think I think what he was saying was sincere. Yeah. As far as do I think he really got choked up? I don't know. Yeah. And the only reason I say that because everything seems sincere. He's so good, you don't know if he's working or not. Exactly. <laughs> I, I know how good Regal is. Yeah. But because he went so in and out of it, yeah. I do think he may have got choked up saying it. You know, like yeah. I don't think he's about to bust out in tears. But do I believe that when he was finally able to thank Tony and do it in front of everybody, that he may have got choked up a little bit? Yeah, I could see that. Because, you know, he he hasn't seen him since he got fired from WCW. So, I mean, that's 20-something years ago. So, you know, but um, is he going to have any back, uh, anything backstage? I don't know. Um, He was originally listed uh, as a coach on their website. I hope so. But... Now he's all he's listed as a uh, his own air talent as a combatant. Okay, well, they he doesn't get I always use a good mind like him back there, you know, straight yeah. up. Some well, of that, and I, I saw somebody may have been Rudy Boy say, uh, AEW will not be the same with William Regal working there, it just won't be, and they mean that in a good way, yeah, of you know, things are going to get better because Regal's there and Regal loves to help. Yeah. Oh, definitely give me a, anything. Any any input will help. You know, I, I say, you know, I like I like um I like AEW. You know, it's I like because it it's different. But still, it's always it's always gonna have a little hokey, pokey, hoo ha, you know. Yeah. You know, it's just what it is. I mean it's it stays wrestling. But well I mean, there's but a lot it's of wrestling stuff. it's wrestling period, because back in the day there was the, the hokey hokey hoo ha. Oh yeah, yeah. Characters. I mean Listen, me and you both love Handsome Jimmy, but once he became <laughs> Boogie Woogie, yeah, Boogie Woogie wasn't doing much, but he's gonna make you smile. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, and so yeah, and like I was in Cornet today. Uh, not only you know, I was always you know, I do Cornet in doses. I can't do a lot of him at the time, you know. So I do the clip things, and he still just and he talked about the that ladder match with Orange Cassidy. He just still he don't get it. He just he. To be this, to me, I think Jim Cornette's the smartest man in wrestling, but he don't get it on this thing. This is one thing he don't he don't get. It. He don't see it. That took me forever to see it. You know, he was talking, he was talking about how it just, you know, he, he was sitting there and did the whole gimmick. You know, did he did we know the hands fought with the big monsters? And, you know, it's like it's like you know I told you when I it finally hit me. You don't think Adrian Street. Skipping around, kissing, rubbing guys down, and that was just, you know, Luke Fez, you know, exactly. And it's just another form, but he cannot. He hates him so bad he he, he don't see it. I said it took me a while to get it. I didn't couldn't didn't get it, you know. And that finally it clicked on me. Yeah, you know. I mean, it's like Adrian Street. It's like it. I ain't comparing. I'm not comparing. Saying oh, he's on the same level. Adrian Street was um amazing technician in the ring but to lead up to that it was all gimmick mind game thing you know 
And when Orange Cassidy gets going, his work's fine, you know? Oh, it's, it's, it works it's, more it's, than it's, fine. Yeah, I think it's, it's, when he when he's fired up, he's really good. Oh, he shows great fire. And but get to that, Cornette don't realize it's the same way Adrian Street would do to get to before he got down to business. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, it's different of doing it, but still the same logic of it. You know? But he hates him so bad he can't see it. You know? I mean, I, I don't think it'll ever change, but. Um, well, and I, but I think that's his deal with like Kenny Omega and the Bucks too. You know, I I fully believe they could, and more so the Bucks. I, I fully believe they could do something well, and Cornette will never give them specifically credit for it. Yeah. Well, I'll get this way. I, there's that style. I'm not a fan of, but that style, they're amazing at it. I agree. You know? I mean, I, I agree on all counts. I'm not a fan of it, but yeah, for what neat. it is, I mean, and it's here to stay. So. You know, but yeah, I mean, they're amazing at it, you know, and Kenny Omega, his style, he's one of the best at that style. And you no, know, he won't even, he won't even go that far, you know. Which, well, yeah, uh, he, he wouldn't even, he wouldn't even put over those matches with Okada <laughs> that, that everybody has talked about how great they are. And I think they are. And I think they're, they're so great because it's, it's as it, wild and crazy as Kenny likes to get. Yeah. But because Okada's in there, everything makes sense. Yeah. So it's still a high spot jamboree. Yeah. But everything makes sense. Like I don't know if you've seen those matches, but I got seen one of them. I think. Man, they're good. One. Yeah, I think I saw one of them. But yeah, it's um, it's a totally different style, and it's that's the style nowadays. Is, you know, well, I mean, nowadays there's all. I mean, I think right now is the most all around different styles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, There's no, so I, I, I agree that you you've got American wrestlers right now who are so good at world of sport wrestling. Yeah, that it like you don't have to go other places to get some of that style. You know, yeah. uh, God, what's his name? Lee Moriarty. Yeah, in, in AEW, amazing at like British world of sport style. You know what I mean? Oh, Gosh, man. he lives in friggin' I think Atlanta. Mm-hmm. But just I mean, just saying the overall. I think that's why I like AEW so much because they have gimmicks. Everybody looks different. Everybody wrestles different. There's so many different styles. Yeah. You know? So I think well, that's yeah, why. And, I like and there's there's some good promos. There's there's promos that people don't give enough credit for. Like I'm sorry, 2.0 is amazing. Dude, there are, uh, there's only like a few actually heels in the company. MJF and those guys are like the only really heels in the company. Straight out heels. Yeah, oh, dude, I, those I, are I'll magnets. forever sing the praises of 2.0. They're so good. They're heat magnets, man. Heat magnets. And, and like you know, the, the one, uh, the the one who looks like one of the fabulous French Canadians. He uh, yeah. There's no way that can be his real voice, <laughs> but it's tremendous. I tell you, oh, we got uh, this guy over here, huh? Yeah, oh, it's so funny. <laughs> the um, the Garcia guy. He's he's. If he can stay healthy, he's gonna. Be, he could be a star eventually. Yeah, stay because he's real young too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's real young. But if if he if he'll stay healthy, bulk up a little bit. Yeah, put a little more size on. Yeah, and uh, which will probably come because he's really young. It can, yeah, he could get a little size on him. Um, just a little more, not too much because he needs it, for his style. He don't need to. You know what I'm saying? But just a little a little bit, a little size on him. Yeah, yeah, he he, he, he needs to be about the size Danielson was in Ring of Honor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't need yeah. to get as big as Danielson is now. No, no, no. But Danielson in Ring of Honor would be perfect for him. Yeah, yeah. He could be a he could be a star because um, that style he, that he's he reminds me of Danielson a lot. Mm-hmm. A lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. You know, now there's um I think they got the best overall talent because it's all hodgepodge. Just so and they, they've got style. an amazing roster, dude. It's 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 yeah. astounding. Yeah. yeah. All right, who are we plugging? Is we got a couple people get a plug, don't we? Oh, yeah. Well, you 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 probably have noticed, fans, that some, we had some commercials pop up during the uh, during the show. We're going to work on getting them all done that way. And you said, oh, you you're going to say something? Yeah, I forgot. Um, I mean, you said uh, I'm talking about Rhett Summers going to be popping up. The um, uh, WMF the match for April first. It's going to be a hanging tough match. Uh, Monte Carlo today 
on the uh, WMF Facebook page, put the little teaser up for it. So um, go to the WMF, WMF Facebook page, look at the little teaser for the April 1st match. All right. And, and while you're going, going ahead, Quentin, what else do you got for us new over at uh, Luthez's UWA? Uh, I put up the, um, gosh, I forgot. I'm in July. I can't, I can't remember what week it is. Uh, but the, um, the Nashville UWA card for Tuesday night and the Nick Gillis Wednesday night um, uh, card for Nashville. That's only only spot show. I mean, they had no, I couldn't find any spot shows for UWA that week. Um, they, in July, they started running mo- every Monday, uh, every Monday night in Owensboro, but they did, they stopped putting the cards in the paper in Owensboro in July. They just put the, the little generic, uh, you know, UWA wrestling every Monday night, you know, so that there's no cards or nothing in it. Um, so they, you said they're already cutting back. Um, only got like a month left and they're done. So <laughs> you only got to find something to do. You know, At least with that, with that that, I hope that guy um, gets some of those reels, that big stack of reels he's got of that footage. He'll start um, getting them transferred over and putting them out on YouTube so we can see some more of the stuff. You know, and maybe I can line up the line up the cards with the and you know tag it with the uh the tv show for that week you know i can line them up and post stuff like that but oh that'd be neat yeah yeah you know but there's not much so there ain't much left um but from those that stack of reels i showed you that guy's got it looks like he might have the whole run of tv so as much reels as the reels he had they're all full shows you know it's about what we count up 20 something yeah yeah, it's, it looks like it might be a full run because their last TV aired last the last week of August in Nashville, but they had already shut down because I got the actual, I don't know if I, tell you, I got the actual letter that um, Buddy Lee and Danny Davis sent to the commission telling they were severing ties with um, uh, Fez and their TV ran one more week after that. So, but yeah, so I'm hoping that that I had something you may, you know, and yes, it's, you know, you never know, I might discover something, um, you know out there digging around i'll put up but yeah there's not much left to go on it so but it'd still be there for people to enjoy to go back and look at it you know to the archive yeah. so i'm telling you man then you then you go and you just start covering the lucha libre one the what oh the lucha uwa yeah then you just start covering that one you'll be fine <laughs> then, then we get to hear your reports on lucha all the time <laughs> oh give me man- as bad as I butcher American names, <laughs> you imagine the. <laughs> well, well, you don't even try on Japanese names anymore. You just let me say them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know. Oh well. What else we got? <laughs> uh, we've got NWA over on YouTube. We got Power, and we got uh, NWA USA. Also, NWA All Access, forty nine ninety nine for the entire year annual subscription. Uh, that will get you every NWA pay-per-view included, first run of NWA Power and NWA USA, and more fight exclusive content to come, as well as the Crockett Cup that's actually coming up very shortly, uh, March 19th and 20th with NWA Power tapings to follow March 21st through 23rd, all of which in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, oh, it is coming up pretty fast. Yeah, it's coming up really fast. Uh, and then we've got uh, go over to storefrontier.com slash clunky's gimmick table. Man, I don't know if I'm going to get my design in time. I'm not, <laughs> not hearing from uh, from the graphic designer, but, you know, I'm not going to complain. Um, but ho- but a whole bunch of cool stuff on there. Uh, heels don't get happy endings. That's the uh, that's my favorite shirt on- over there. Very Disney inspired. Um, so go check it out. That's again, the storefrontier.com slash clunky's gimmick table. And Last but not least, like, subscribe, and comment on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you listen to us on. We really appreciate it. Yeah, go visit the people we watch their we use for their matches on here. Go check them out. I know we gotta head out. We're over, but just remind me you said the Disney inspired shirt. So when are you and the wife moving to uh, Florida, brother? Listen, if she had her way, because they because uh, I just saw a thing. It said that they're building neighborhoods in the park now, or adjacent to the park disney neighborhood na- neighborhood for disney oh my god <laughs> Keep that like that doesn't happen because she hears that 
<laughs> Can't find it, brother. Can't find it from her. <laughs> yeah, I saw yeah. the day. It's like uh, they're going to build it adjacent to the park. It's supposed to be a big Disney neighborhood for like real houses and everything. It's, yeah, Disney theme. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I'd be broke, man. <laughs> Broken already. You know, tell us what the house what a house cost down there. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just saw it the day I forgot. I was going to mention it to you. <laughs> All right, well, I was happy with the matches. Are you happy with the matches this week? It was good. Yeah, no, I was, I was super happy with them. I, I figured the Paul Bosch match would be fun. Um, I didn't know what to expect with your F&W match. But, again, Onita hooks me, man. Well, yeah. All right, well, you got anything to add? Nothing from me. Uh, if you're done, I'm done. Stick a fork in her. She's done for Jeremiah Puckett. Quit charisma. Hey, that's me. Thanks for listening. God bless. Bye-bye, everybody.